Hi there, this is Chris over 3D Palace. How are you doing? Okay, so this tutorial set that we're about to undertake, um, this is one part of an overall set. Whether or not I get a chance to complete the set, I don't know, but this is a long tutorial set. Um, I'm going to put this down as a kind of... not easy, possibly intermediate, certainly not difficult set, okay? Now, you're going to need some modelling skills, which, if you don't have the basic modelling skills, I suggest you go onto our website at 3D Palace and download Dreadnought version 1, Minigun, and the chess set. You're going to need to know a little bit about polygon modelling. Um, just the basics, how to use the tool sets. You're going to be, need to be fairly used to things like bevelling edges, uh, chamfer tools, um, extrude, uh, basic poly editing and modelling stuff, you know. I move fairly fast through the tutorial set. I'll make no apologies for that. Um, this is an end-to-end -end set. We're going to start with a completely empty 3D Studio Max. I mean, quite literally, when you come to the set, it'll just, uh, you know, when you come to the set, there's going to be nothing there at all. This is basically what you're going to see, apart from the home grid. Let's close this window down. Um, by the time you're finished, you're going to have a completely textured item. You'll even have a simple kind of final gather tested light set tested light with HDRI, just so you can see how it looks. A um, couple of points to remember, you're going to need Photoshop or GIMP or something like that. You're not going to be able to do the texturing in, for example, Microsoft Paint. I mean, technically you can, but it's going to look like crap. Um, obviously you need 3D Studio Max, I'm using version 8. There's nothing to stop you using version 7. Uh, I don't use pelt mapping, I'm not using anything particularly specific. You'll see some of the new features of Max kind of sitting in the background, but uh, I'm not going to kind of focus on them, to be quite honest. Chances are you could do this in Max 6 if you really wanted to. I don't even know which version of Photoshop I'm using. I got this license a long time ago, and uh, I have no idea. Um, anything else? Well, no, that's about it, really. So let's have a look and see what we're going to make for you. So, this is the wireframe of our model. Okay, incidentally, if you're wondering what this is in the top corner, that's key view. Okay, this shows you the keys that I'm using. And what I'm doing, see, middle mouse button, while I'm pressing Alt, right, left, you see? It even shows the buttons I'm pressing. Okay, so I'm just navigating around my model. Hopefully you know how to navigate. It's quite simple, it's uh, not massively high polygon. This is approximately, if I use my polygon counter, there you go. Polygon 17,928 polys. Okay? And that's for everything, including rivet heads. This actual piece itself, though, is only 7,000 polys. Reason being, I kept the polys moderately low so that I can use it as a prefabricated building. What I mean by that is I can stack them on top of each other, I can have them side to side, you know, all these things like that, yeah? For creating a much bigger piece and then intersperse them with other pieces very industrial kind of idea. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual model itself. This is it, it's fairly simple in premise. We've got our escape capsule here, okay. People get into it through this sliding doorway here, closes after them and then this bombs off through a tunnel and takes them out of the massive industrial works to somewhere safe in case of, you know, some sort of an accident. It's also used for loading and unloading people when they arrive and depart as a normal form of transportation. There's quite a few of these because obviously they have such a large amount of people coming and going. Um, to access it, as you see, we've got these kind of stairwells here for going up and down, very oil rig like. Uh, walkways here, it's all very much supposed to look like it's assembled and bolted together, IKEA style, if you know what I mean. Over here, this one's empty, and at the back, we've got the blast doors closed. This is kind of to infer that the train that was in here is full. It's headed off, it's at the other station now. Doors are closed behind it just in case there's a gas leak or gas explosion. Stops the track getting compromised. Here we've got a little window which can be used to have a screen that shows information or whatever. The doorway to this one is open, the chain's not there so it doesn't matter, presumably for maintenance. Down here we have our little screen, our little terminal which can be used for people coming in saying, you know, go to cab A, go to cab B, whatever. Unimportant features on this set which I've just put in really because if you look we've got you know this ceiling here this wall here and around the back we've got another one here and then we've got the underside 
these pieces aren't important they're not going to be seen in our rendering okay you can isolate them off you can have this as a single piece in the middle of nowhere if you want in which case texture these bits by all means I'm not going to show you but there's more than enough stuff in this tutorial set to show you how to do it okay press F11 let's kind of jump out of that sorry that's my draw, t draw key if you're wondering okay so if I render this you're not going to see anything particularly exciting you see ooh it's a bit chunky in places and stuff okay quick talk about the texturing and unwrapping tutorials now I do unwrapping for this and what I do is I unwrap this to a single UV map. I don't unwrap it kind of, you know, unwrap this part here and then unwrap this part here to separate maps. Uh, some people do. Uh, I didn't really feel like it at the time. Um, this isn't a game model, so I was going for, you know, whatever works, as I call it. Greg, who's uh, a texturing guru, particularly in games, excellent guy. If anyone wants to recruit him or whatever paid work, you know, get in touch with him via our IRC or our website, but shows to anyway. He um, made some texturing tutorials for this. Very game orientated. Excellent stuff, okay. You could really use this in a game model if you kind of thrash down the faces quite a bit. Um, the one that I did was for kind of more scene based, kind of more straight laced kind of 3D work, you know. Okay, uh, I'm waffling a little bit here anyway. I'll show you the UV unwrap that we make and some other stuff in a minute, but first, let's just stick the map on it, so here's the map here, okay, so you can see this is the one that I created, as you can see the back sides and bottom are kind of flaky, but this piece isn't, because I've viewed that this part will probably be seen at some point, but let's have a look and see what I've created here, you see, we've got our blast door on the left, there's not much lighting in this, so it won't take long, and as you can see we've kind of drawn in panels, we've got our kind of decals at the back there, all that kind of business, in there, we've got our little screen that you can just see. Do, 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 do. There you go, you see. Now if we go over here, there's our kind of information terminal, or whatever you want to call it. And you can change whatever's on there just by changing the map. I've just got a wireframe of this piece and a white background. Because I thought, you know, well, why not? Over there, look, we've got a warning decal on the wall. Nicely faded, makes it look like it's been there for a while. Do, do, do. There we are. Go over to this side, and there's a rather nice one. I just pulled all these decals off Google Live while I was doing the set. Right. And of course, over here we've got our main glass door. Ching. Oh. Not main blast door, main first shuttle, sorry, which is going to scoot off down the tunnel. Whoosh, off it goes. And of course, there's our steps and stuff, you know. And you can even view it from underneath, except that's in the way. And there's our end wall, the one that I actually added some minor texture detail to. As you can see, so it's a big sheet with blast marks on and stuff like that, yeah? Because this is a kind of proper industrial piece, it's not going to be clean and lovely aluminium y. Uh, like I was saying, you know, we can stack them. And I built them really to be kind of stacked like this. I'll show you. I'm not going to mess around getting it exact because really I can't be bothered. There we go. Stack that one in there. So, you know, you can stack them like that and then select them all. There we are. Um, oh, it might be easier to do this in the front actually to show you. I mean, I'm probably, you know, just showing you some of the things that we can do with this set. Just so you can decide for yourself, you know, mm, I quite fancy that or mm, no, I'll do this. So there you go, you see, and it makes this big wall. It's like a, you know, a cliff side mounted station. And all these parts kind of attach to each other and you can get to the top part here. I'll have to build some sort of a kind of uh, piece to go on top of this so that people can kind of get in or whatever and, you know, go off amongst them at their duties. But that's not going to be too hard and that's going to be good fun. And it doesn't take too long to render because we haven't got any lights in the scene. <laughs> so when you put lights in the scene, it takes a while. Now, what I haven't shown in the end tutorial, when I hold it all together, is how to build a simple kind of light sim rig. I'm just going to show you how to do this now as a kind of introduction to the set. And uh, then I'm going to leave you with the 20 plus Greg, so 23 parts of this tutorial set, which is quite a lot. I think you'll agree. 
looking for a free set and there's a lot of information to be carried out to be uh, taken in. So I have to make a quick, simple, effective, dirty library. I'm going to make an Omni, one there, and I'm going to set its information to a multiply of 0.5, uh, shadow map, standard, we should have a shadow map parameter, here we are, 1024 for the size, I'm going to make a copy of it, which I'll just put over here, make it an instance, select them both, bring them up, there we go. Now, using my rotate tool, I'm going to go, mm, oh, hang on, cancel. Press A for angle snap, and go 45 degrees, and make three instances. There you go. Now I'm going to select all my lights. Isn't this fun? Of course it is. Then, with all my lights selected, do it again, 45, three copies. Okay, and now we've got this light dome going all the way around it. I'm just going to uh, delete off a couple of these gathering of lights that are kind of just in these corners here. There we go. So now if I go down here, I love doing this by the way. You can see a nice kind of background effect. Just hit render. And it's completely dark. Hang on. Change it from men the way to standard, I think. Uh, where do I put it? Oh, yeah, common. Assign renderer. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, blah, default scan line. That's just the one I want to use for the minute. Right, so our preparing lights bar goes climb, climb, climb. There you go. And that's how we create a simple kind of all round kind of lighting solution. Yeah. I can turn on shadows if I want. Where's my light listed? Oh, shadows are on. 0.325, there we go, just drop that down a bit, and I'll use ray trace shadows just for the sheer comedy value. There you go. See, that's how you make a simple kind of uh, lighting dome. Light coming in from every angle, lots of fun. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to leave the tutorial with you. I hope you enjoy it. Please feel free to make comments on the forums. Um, if you were stupid enough to download this off P2P or one of those stupid bloody sites that all you sad gits hang out at downloading DVD tutorials that you could never possibly hope to accomplish, then, you know, good luck to your 3K per second connection. I mean, get it from us. It's free. All you do is register. Bloody cheeses. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the first part of the tutorial.